Alright guys, we're here for my deck tech. Uh, I'm going to be playing a Jeskai mid-range control deck. I don't really this know. This is a control deck. It is a control deck, but uh, you know, this deck is very heavy on removal, but a lot of the removal has alternate applications mm -hmm. uh, to deal with like, you know, more than just creatures. But let's go and take a look at the deck and I'll explain what everything is good against. Let's do it. Alright, so uh, as you can see, our deck uh, is a little strange. Uh, we're basically just a, a, a base uh, red deck with like a little bit of white and a little bit of blue. Um, the blue is namely for uh, Karano's God of Storms, but I also wanted to play a little bit more card draw. So I'm trying out you a Singleton Interpret card. Designs. I, I tested this card a lot in Block Constructed, and it was very good. Like when I when I you know missed on it, it kind of stunk. But you know this deck actually has a pretty high mana curve, and like even though. Um, you know, I have like a, a couple of cheap removal spells. A lot of my, you know, bigger removal spells like uh, in Hostilities, uh, Fated Conflagration, these cards will just draw you a ton. And mm -hmm. if you just scry one to the top, like, you know, I don't care if like drawing a Fated Conflagration is bad in a certain spot as long as I'm drawing three other cards and this. Yeah. This could have ap applications later. Um, you know, and it, it is kind of cool that some of my cards have like alternate casting costs. Like Ash Cloud Phoenix could cost three if I just need a blocker yeah. early on. Uh, but when I do it with Interpret Signs, it is for four. <clears throat> Now, the removal base, as you can see, is pretty geared towards beating aggressive decks. We have uh, Chain of the Rocks, Magma Jet, Lightning Strike, as are really, really cheap early ways to interact with them, as well as uh, Three Anger of the Gods to sweep away things like Rowl Master and whatnot. Um, the one card that I wanted to try with all these cheap removal spells was Goblin Slide, and I'm not sure if this card's actually good, but it felt kind of similar to like Lightning Rift in that it like lets you kill a guy and gain some small amount of value mm -hmm. with your spells. And yes, we don't have like Azorius Charm, we don't have a lot of ways to just like cycle things. I could play Divination, but uh, we're going to get to why I'm not playing Divination in just a minute, and I could just be wrong for this. Uh, we have two in Hostilities as our top end way to deal with these giant like Rhinos and things like that mm -hmm. that people are going to play that Anger doesn't kill and these burn spells don't kill. Uh, other than that though, we have uh, Banishing Light, which are great against Planeswalkers, creatures of all sorts, and then uh, two Fated Conflagration, similarly. Now, the reason why uh, we have Fated Conflagration, and even though it's triple red, is because we are playing a ton of mountains for Chain of the Rocks. Mm -hmm. And the way we kind of cheat the system here is that we play Evolving Wilds as one of our dual lands, because it can count as a virtual mountain, so we have effectively 10 mountains, for our three Chain of the Rocks, while also having a land that can be any of our three colors. Mm -hmm. uh, what I love about Evolving Wilds in this deck and the way I built the mana base is that I can start off with either a Mystic Monastery or a Temple of Triumph, and then on turn two, I can play and crack Evolving Wilds to go get the mountain to play off of these lands. Similarly to Battlefield Forge, I can uh, play that on turn two. Like I can play Battlefield Forge on one if I, you know, and then top deck the Evolving Wilds crack, go get a mountain, and then cast the Chain of Rocks off of this. Yeah. But I really love the idea of being able to cheat on mountains with Evolving Wilds, and I think that is like the one you know uh, card that pairs really well with Chain of the Rocks in the new standard format. Um, our threats, we have Ash Cloud Phoenix, uh, Karanos for card advantage slash uh, killing creatures, uh, Sarkin for killing our opponents and killing creatures, and Elspeth because it's Elspeth. I don't really have a good reason other than that. Yeah. Uh, I think Ash Cloud Phoenix is probably going to be one of the best uh, like cards for red decks that goes on either an aggressive shell or a yeah, control I shell. Agree. It just feels very similar to Voice of Resurgence where it, like, it can play a dual role mm -hmm. of control or aggro and uh, the fact that you can rebuy it is pretty awesome. If there's a little Nambo here with Anger of the Gods and Ash Cloud Phoenix but I'm mostly planning to just Anger on 3 and then Ash Cloud on 4. Yeah, if you're in a matchup where Anger's not that good, also Ash Cloud Phoenix can like annoy the opponent long enough to where an Anger just, it's fine. Yeah, and uh, the main reason why I'm not playing Divination is because uh, in order to play enough mountains in the deck with Evolving Wilds, I don't think we can get away with playing uh, a bunch of things like Temple of Epiphany because we already have 12 lands that come into play mm -hmm. tapped. And since it's, we're base red-white, we're playing uh, Temple of Triumph as well. That way I can have the one-two punch of turn one uh, Temple of Triumph, turn two Evolving Wilds into Chain of the Rocks. Because yeah. if we play any of the other temples besides, I mean, we could play the blue eye Temple, but uh, I don't think we need more white sources or blue sources. And uh, we're not playing Divination because we don't want to play that many blue sources. So. Sure. All right, well, that is the main deck for Jeskai Control. Let's get to the sideboard, and then we'll kill all Brad's creatures. <laughs> so our board is uh, a little strange in that we have uh, kind of an alternate sideboard plan against Control decks. I love the one-two punch of Bremaz and Tashandra against decks that... Uh, 
are not really trying to, you know, kill a lot of your creatures, right? Like, uh, after game one, they're only going to see Ash Cloud, Phoenix, and Planeswalkers, and they're probably going to board out, you know, a lot of their, uh, you know, ways that can interact with this guy. Aside from, like, Hero's Downfall, or at least we just get to, uh, you know, put more pressure on the removal spells, and if Bremaz gets left unchecked, can win the game very easily by itself. So why'd you pick Bremaz over uh, Goblin... Rebel Master, though. Uh, because Bremaz uh, can have applications against aggressive decks. That's if true, like yeah. I, I would I would bring this in against opposing Rebel Master decks uh, because he just goes he lives really well. He lives through anger and he goes really well. Like you play Bremaz, they have to over over commit to the board yep. and then anger just gets to blow them out. Um, you know he's a dual threat and he may deserve main deck slots. I'm not positive yet. Uh, but I want to keep him in the board for now just because I want to trot in hostilities yeah. and I didn't want to have too much of a non bow there. Uh, a couple of reprisals against big guy decks, a couple magma sprays, uh, and Nyx Fleece Rams to go in against the more hyper aggressive decks. And then three Disdainful Stroke, which might be interchangeable for Negate. I mean, depending this is on pretty much Flash Freeze, though. Like, it just counters all the big, like. <laughs> I mean, that's what this card yeah, kind of yeah, feels yeah, like yeah. to me. Yeah, it's Flash Freeze and Counter Elspeth, which I love. Yep. So, uh, Disdainful Stroke feels like a very strong counter spell out of the board. And since, uh, you know, we only have nine sources of blue, we don't want to play, uh, like, Dissolve or things like that. So, I think Disdainful Stroke fits perfectly into the sideboard here. All right, guys. Well, that is Jeskai Control. Uh, let's get to battle. Battle. <laughs> 